Tonight, the WHAS 11 News I team is reopening the file on a cold case murder that's been unsolved longer than many of the stories we've profiled. It's been nearly a decade since Michael Harris Sr. was shot dead in Louisville's Russell neighborhood. The Harris family wants you to watch this story tonight because 10 years is far too long to wait for justice. Here's the I team's Derek Rose. I love playing with him. That was a game that we both love to play. A love of the game shared between father and son. Mike Harris Jr. has fond memories of his time with his dad. When I was younger, we, he, we, we was active, very active. We would go place to place. I think Hooters was our favorite place to go. <laughs> so His family remembers young Mike's father as the life of the party, even if it meant he was the last to arrive. He's the one that likes to be the last one come in the door because he wants everybody to ooh and ah over him. And it was in those times his family shared plenty of laughs. His laugh was his, the biggest one. He had the most craziest laugh to me. And it made me smile. He was uh, always had this laughter that would just crack you up. It was like if you heard that laughter, you knew he was around. Mike Sr. played basketball at Jeffersonville High School. His coach and teammates were like a second family. Mom. Uh, Coach Broughton's going to take us over his house. Uh, I'm going to eat dinner with him. I'm like, OK, Mike, but you can't do this every night. You got to come home. Mike Sr.'s basketball career would take him north to Terry Haute and Indiana State University. An example that showed Mike Jr. his passion for the sport could lead him just as far. Basketball, even though it's just a game, it's more than that to me because it's my memory of him. And that memory can go on for the rest of my life. Ten years old at the time, life was just beginning for Mike Jr. Days before Christmas 2007, Mike Sr.'s mother had a feeling something was wrong when he did not show up for the family's annual Christmas gathering. At home later that night, a knock at the door. I walked to the door and I seen two detectives at the door. And I said, I don't want to hear it. Whatever it is you've got to tell me, I don't want to hear it because I knew that that was not a good sign. Sherry could not escape the news. Her son had been murdered. Mike Jr. was there with his grandmother. The bad news was kept away from him. But when relatives started to show up at the house, their feelings could not be hidden. I mean, my grandmother was in the room, well, I guess with one of her sisters, and they was holding each other crying. Everybody was just crying. I didn't know what happened. Metro Police say it was in the middle of the day on a Saturday afternoon when they got the call for a suspicious vehicle. It was in the area of 17th and Plymouth Court in the Russell neighborhood. Mike Sr.'s body was found inside a vehicle parked behind the Plymouth Court apartments. Did he know somebody over there? Did somebody have him meet him over there? I, I don't know. Obviously something had to, um, you know, I guess uh, push him over there. I don't know why or who would have done what they did for whatever reason. I just. I don't have a clue. Detectives canvassed the area hoping to find clues or a witness that could give them some answers. There's, you know, there's a sense of loss that, you know, that comes along with, you know, not only did they lose the, the you know, their loved one, but uh, not knowing exactly why. Um, and we want to try to provide that. It was the next day Mike Jr. learned what happened to his father. And took my mother to tell me that my father passed away. I cried instantly. I didn't know what happened. I was probably the only one, and it just really just hit me hard because really just losing my best friend was the biggest thing. For the next few years after his father's death, Mike Jr. felt broken, and it was not until he was almost 13 did he learn the circumstances behind his father's death. Really, out of all these years, it took me probably eight, eight years to truly know what forgiveness is. And I realized that if I forgave this person, it would release everything from me and I would move on. Now, is it still painful? Yes, of course, but it's not gonna hold me back. Nearly a decade after the murder, detectives still visit the area where it happened because crime scene photos in a file don't always paint a clear picture. And so this is it. It is. Um, as you can see now, it's obviously uh, things have been let go. It appears to be abandoned, the units and stuff. But uh, this was um, occupied at the time. This was uh, a little bit more well maintained at the time. The apartment building there is empty now. Dozens of potential witnesses have moved on. But for homicide detectives, the case is never complete until there's an arrest. There's no free pass. You know, this is um, 
this is a, a murder, you know, it's, uh, and we will, we'll, we'll never quit on it. I understand that it's hard to come forth and truly come out and say that, oh, this person did it. But truly, as a community, do you really want to stand back knowing that you know what happened? You just want to be that person and just stand back? Even if you do wrong your whole life, you did wrong, that one moment that you want to decide to do good will reflect who you are later on in your life. For the I-Team, Derek Rose, WHAS 11 News. And if there is something you remember about this investigation that could help police, you can speak with detectives anonymously on this investigation as well. You know that number to call. We tell you often. It's 574-LMPD. And if there's a cold case you think we should investigate in our Inside Investigation special series here, please send us an email to iteam at whas11.com.